Welcome to the Chef's Kitchen. I'm your host, Nicole Gaffney, and we're here today with Chef Frank Oliveri. Hi. Great to have you back. <laughs> nice to be back. What are we making today? Today we're going to do salt encrusted bronzini yeah. with some fennel, roasted fennel and roasted heirloom tomatoes. Beautiful. Tis the season for great tomatoes yeah, right now, huh? Yeah, it's the perfect season for mm -hmm. all this. Everything is just coming out and uh, nothing says summertime like that. Talk about what kind of a fish this is. Okay. Like well, this particular fish is a Mediterranean sea bass. This mm -hmm. one's from Greece. Okay. So, um... You flew it's, it in special just We for flew us. it in special today, yeah. So it's a nice, light, flaky fish. And what's nice about this preparation is it, it kind of steams the fish inside of it with the, with the citrus and the aromatics, and it just mm -hmm. flavors the entire fish. And it's just a really nice presentation. Cool. It's like it's a good date night kind of thing. All right, perfect. Where I just want to impress your, you know, in laws. Impress whoever. Whatever. So it's it's, it, starts out, <laughs> it starts out really easy. We get about six egg whites. Okay. And pop them into a bowl and. Whisk them up. All right. You so, need to get them frothy, like get them nice and frothy. About um, not stiff peaks, like salt peaks. And then we're going to mix a lot of sea salt in there. A, a lot. A I lot mean, of sea a salt. Lot yeah. Of sea salt. Does it have to be sea salt? The sea salt, the coarse kosher sea salt, works mm -hmm. the best because it, it it gets like a sandy consistency, and the egg whites. Help form a, a very dense crust over okay. top of it once it's. So you don't want to use like an iodized table no, salt for this? No, never, okay. no. Good, good Real know. chefs never use iodized <laughs> table That's salt. That's an excellent point. That's never, never. I don't, even, I don't even think I have any in my house. Yeah, I think no. I use it to kill slugs. <laughs> Where'd you get the recipe for this? So uh, this is, I, I, I might have to give a plug to a restaurant in Atlantic City. I've been going to a place called Gear Soul for place. years. Mm -hmm. And this is one of my favorite, favorite dishes that they yeah. do there. So I've been making this dish for about 20 years plus. Really? Yeah. And actually, I was just there a few weeks ago and we yeah. had it. And I'm like, maybe I should do that. Just give yeah, a little nod right to that. There. Great pizzas, too. Oh, my gosh. So good. <laughs> All right. So we're going to put a, a copious amount of sea salt in here. All right. So you got those whites pretty frothy. Yeah, they're pretty frothy. Okay. And we're going to mix it around. So it has like a sandy consistency. Yeah. It's exactly what it looks like is wet sand on the mm -hmm. beach. You could make those little drippy castles with yes. it, you know? So, I mean, just. It's nice to flavor this too. Some people put a little bit of rosemary inside it. Well, mm -hmm. Do you like the way that came? I love it, All yeah. Right. <laughs> I have to put, here, put a pinch of pepper in there for me. Okay. Because it kind of flavors the outside of the fish as well. And you flavor the inside of the fish too. Okay. So let's put a little bit on, on the baking sheet here. So the egg white is going to, I guess, firm up and kind of create that crust in the oven? Is it's, that what happens? Exactly. I've never made this before. No? No. It's first time for everything. Yeah. So this is really, it's a really nice preparation. Mm -hmm. It, because it, it all tastes good, believe it or not. It comes really well. I believe you. All right, so um, you, put the, you put a layer down on the baking sheet because what this does is insulates the fish from overcooking so okay. quickly. So let's get some aromatics. You want to mm -hmm. cut me some slices of grapefruit? Sure. Please. Just rind on, just yeah. straight up slices. Mm -hmm. And then we're okay. going to cut them in half moons. So, How whoop, thin? So we're half a, like that's like perfect. That. Okay. So we're going to get our bronzino, bronzini, bronzino, tomato, tomato. <laughs> That's good. Okay. And cut those in half moons along with some lemons as well. Okay. So I like to put in some uh, rosemary mm -hmm. and double duty with this. So we're going to make some roasted fennel and some roasted heirloom tomatoes. So we use the fronds from the fennel to also uh, provide some aromatics inside the fish. Now, do you want the lemons and half moons also? Well, they're small enough. I think it'll fit. So you're stuffing these all inside? Stuffing them all inside just to flavor the inside of the fish. <laughs> And the lemons and my <laughs> rosemary in there as well. Get some fennel fronds. I'll put those in here too. Mm -hmm. And this is like really simple and easy. And cover the fish. And it doesn't make the fish salty at all. No, I'm still having fish a hard isn't time salty. It. Wait, I'm gonna <clears throat> make it look pretty. Okay, so you got to really spread it around. Yeah. So if you're good at spackling at home, this. <laughs> This is a good technique. I can't say that's one of my skills, <laughs> nor do I want it to be. So what we do with this is, now this is basically finished. Um, so okay. I wouldn't say prepare it too much ahead of time because <clears throat> the, um, the egg whites have a tendency sometimes to leak a little moisture out of it. All right. So, um, and then you just, this goes in the oven at 400 degrees for 20 minutes. That's it. Or, or until the internal temperature is about 135. Okay. You don't want to overcook it. No. And then you take it out not. and let it rest a few minutes mm -hmm. and then you crack it open. Very excited to see this. Yeah. We'll return with more from The Chef's Kitchen. 
We now return to the chef's kitchen. So we'll pop this in the oven. So we're gonna pop this one in the oven. And we'll come visit that in about 20 minutes or at 135. Great. So, um, so for the roasted fennel, do you want to slice some fennel? Sure. Okay. Whatever you need me to do, I'm okay. here to do it. So the fennel's nice because it, 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 it's, an, it's a nice accompaniment to the fish because it provides that little anise flavor. Mm -hmm. And the roasted tomatoes with their, with their broth that they make is just beautiful. Okay. So I do a, I do a wonderful thing to accent the, the tomatoes and the fennel. So right there in that bottle, I have a- This here? Yeah, homemade. It's a, it's a lemon infused olive oil, extra virgin olive oil. You make this? I make it. How do you make it? So what you do is you wash a, wow. a lemon, a couple of lemons good. really, really well mm -hmm. to make sure all you know, bacteria off of them. Right. You take only the peel off, make sure there's no pith, the white stuff. Right. And you kind of steep it in olive oil mm -hmm. just until light bubbles come. So you want to heat it? You want to heat the olive okay. oil. I don't know what temperature, but you just until it just bubbles a little just a bit. a little bit. And then you shut it down and just let it sit. And you can let it sit for like, you know, some people let it sit for 24 hours. I okay. let it sit for about four hours and then mm -hmm. I strain it through and then nice. keep it. It'll last, a, you know, few weeks, maybe a month or two. Refrigerate it? I don't refrigerate no. it, but um, it's a nice little thing to put on after. And I use it actually to marry the flavor so it just follows through. I use a little bit in it with the fennel mm -hmm. and the tomatoes while roasting. Nice. Yeah, so they roast along with the fish. Great. So it's kind of like everything comes out at once. Awesome. Yeah. So do you want me to cut this up? Sure. Now, do you take the core out of the middle? I do. How do you do. usually cut sometimes it? Sometimes I do. I take the core out sometimes, or it depends how I feel. How do you like it? How do you do it? Well, I usually take like these outer leaves off. So uh -huh. I mean, depending. I'll okay. do it because I don't want to do it the wrong way. Right. Uh, and then I cut the core out uh -huh. like that just because it's a little tough. Sometimes, yeah. It can be. <laughs> if it's big. These actually aren't too big. No, they're not too big. And then I slice it. How do you, how I slice do you it. want it sliced? Do you want it kind of thick? Yeah, I like it, it about maybe like three eighths of an inch. In this way or this way? Long ways. Okay. Three-eighths of an inch. That is a very specific <laughs> measurement. <laughs> so just a little sea salt with that okay. and olive oil, with lemon olive oil and pepper. With 20 it? minutes in the oven and they're good to go. Okay. And do you roast them with the tomatoes? I roast them along. Separate? I put them separately because I like the broth from the tomatoes and okay. I like kind of dress the fish with that as well. And now the tomatoes, do you roast them whole or do you cut them in half? I roast the tomatoes whole. I don't like, I like when they just explode. Mm -hmm. rather than just have them cut initially. These are beautiful too. Yeah, they're really nice. All kinds of different varieties here. So that's dinner. So that's What's dinner. What's for dessert? So since you use so many egg whites to make the crust, ah. I figure why not do something creative with the yolks instead of just throwing them away. I was wondering what was gonna happen to those yolks. So I know you didn't chuck them. To carry the, the flavors of the citrus with dinner and dessert, mm -hmm. let's make a key lime pie. Love it. This is a very, very simple recipe. I love key lime pie. Yeah, it's one record. of my favorites. So put about six tablespoons of butter, always unsalted butter, mm -hmm. um, a cup and a half of graham crackers, Okay. Um, three tablespoons of sugar. And then we're gonna mix this together with a spoon. <clears throat> So this is just our graham cracker crust. Very traditional. Graham, very traditional. Key lime pie. Um, yeah, I, I kind of do something different with mine. Most, a lot of people put sour cream. Some people yeah. don't. I mean, some people put whipped cream. I put sour cream. Nice. You put sour cream in your cheesecake too, right? I we do put sour class, cream so in my cheesecake. Remember cheese. that. I have a thing for sour cream. Yeah. Well, so, that was one of the best cheesecakes I ever had. So. Thank you. Not blowing smoke either. So we put this in. And for this recipe, this will go at about 350 degrees for five minutes for just the crust. So just you just want to get it to kind of set up. You just want bit. it to set up a little bit. Okay. So the story I heard about key lime pie is that they really didn't bake them hmm. in Key West because it was so hot down here. Why yeah, would you want well, to put your true. stove on? Great point. So because it's almost like it's like a the preparation for like ceviche because the lime juice and the sugar in the sweetened condensed milk actually cook the egg yolks. Wow. So, interesting. So for this just to be on the safe side. We just put it in for like 15 minutes really? at 300 degrees up. and it sets up. Wow. I have to say, I, I appreciate your crust ratio here. I'm a big crust person. Yeah. And that's a nice amount of crust. Thank you. We'll return with more from The Chef's Kitchen. We now return to The Chef's Kitchen. So this is pretty simple. Um, I'll tell you one, one of the hardest things to do 
is to juice these little guys. Yeah, these are key limes, right? Yeah, they are so key that's limes. That's why they're so small. So I think it just it does taste actually much better when you use key limes. I mean, you could buy mm -hmm. store bought stuff, but why buy store bought stuff when you can just do it yourself? So how? What's the difference in flavor with the key limes? They're just taste? a little more tart. Okay. And more <laughs> difficult to use. Yeah. So this is how I did a little tech tips. This is how I do it. So I cut cut the ends off so it stands mm -hmm. like that, and then I'll just slice it down the side like this. And then I'll just come along here and like this, and I'll kind of roll it out. Oh. So you use the whole lime? Yeah, use the whole lime. No, then I'd, I have a juicer. Oh, So you okay. can either put that it in a squeezer gotcha. or, or, or a food, pro, you know, okay. food juicer. And that just makes it so much easier. So you get about right. um, about a whole, like a pound of key limes. That's a, you need a lot of key limes. Yeah, you need a lot so of key limes. So a pound of key limes will yield you about, um, about a half a cup. Okay. It's pretty easy to do. It's kind of fun too. We have a bowl. Okay. We have we about something with this? half a cup of key lime juice. It has a much um, a much richer texture. Yes. It's almost milky looking. It is milky like. Mm -hmm. And this is a 14 ounce container of sweet and condensed milk. And this is essential for key lime pie, right? This it, is, it has to be. It's the pie. backbone. Yeah. It's the backbone. So this isn't this isn't one of your like cheesecake kind of ones. Mm -hmm. This is more like a. Um, a traditional. The classic, yeah. yeah. You want to separate me four eggs? So I sure. just need the yolks. Okay. So actually, if you want, you can save the whites and make yourself a nice little meringue, and you can top it off and then okay. hit it with a blow, hit it with like a blow a, torch. Like a lemon meringue, but key lime. Yeah, like, like a it. key lime meringue pie. Okay. So we put four of those in here. Do you have any special tricks for separating eggs, or am I doing it? Well, you're oh, doing you it perfectly. Go. I do it. I usually do it over the sink using my hands and yeah. let the yolks, I mean, the, uh, the whites fall between my fingers. I guess but that gets kind of messy. Say it's messier, but this is pretty messy. It is messy. messier, yeah. As it is. These are, these are things I have, I've adopted over the years of, mm -hmm. you know, between making cheesesteaks, reading cookbooks, and, you know, having a desire to become a chef other than a cheesesteak chef. Right. Yeah. All right, one more. One more. Yeah, so when I was you know, growing up in the business, mm -hmm. um, I was always you know, enamored with chefs and watching TV mm -hmm. and Galloping Gourmet and, and uh, oh, yeah. Julia Child, and I always wanted to be that classically trained French chef. Right. You know, life happens. I just went to work at the store, mm -hmm. and I've been slinging cheesesteaks. And tell what store you're talking about. So <laughs> my, my family business is Pat's King of Steaks in Philadelphia. I've never heard of it before. Yeah, it's a yeah. little, <laughs> little cheesesteak joint on the corner of 9th and Pashunk right. Avenue. There's that, there's that other one across the street. There's that right? other one across the street, my competitor, Gino's. But uh, we've been there since 1930. My great uncle Pat, back mm -hmm. in 1930, invented the steak sandwich and the cheesesteak sandwich. So this is the family business, the family legacy right. that I've taken the over. The original. The original, the original, the original 1930, undisputed. Yep. There was no, no one else was around. I don't think the Declaration of Independence was signed back Love then. It. So, can I have that, that pie <laughs> crust? And we're gonna pour this right in. So, like I said, this goes in for about 17 minutes. Wow. Great. Great. So, through the magic of <clears throat> television, we have one done already. Beautiful. So, so you only cooked this for minutes. Seventeen right? minutes, correct. So this is about three quarter cup of sour cream. Your favorite. I love sour cream. I have to go to sour cream and Eaters Anonymous or something. <laughs> and, my husband will join you there. Oh my gosh! And this is about three tablespoons of confectioner sugar. Nice. And this this is really nice because it makes the confectioner sugar makes the sour cream very glossy. So this is going to be the topping. Like a whipped this is the topping. Cream. Some people put whipped cream, the Chantilly cream. Mm -hmm. I just think that this, I like the tart on tart with yeah. the sweet underneath with the graham right. cracker. I just think it just it's such a nice flavor. I like it. And then, so then you just go right on top with right that. On top of it. Mm -hmm. Just like frosting. Yeah, just like frosting. This is almost like making a pizza. Yeah, totally. Sauce. Here we go. Well, it's very rustic too. I like that you're not, you know, messing around with pastry bags or anything too fancy. Here this you is go. really my style. Put a little key lime zest on top of that. All right. Any fancy technique here? Not. This will be your interpretation of my key lime <laughs> pie. Just a little bit. 
Yeah, just a little bit, because the key line, the zest on that is very, very pungent. Right, well, I noticed and you didn't put any zest in the filling. Yeah, a lot of recipes do call for it in, right. in, the, uh, in the recipe, but I just think it just overwhelms it. That's mm. my personal opinion. Perfect. That's Great. that. Well, dessert's done. I mean, I dessert's can finish done. right here and just eat this, but we, we still have that fish. We still have to fillet that fish. All right, so. well, before we get to the fish, I'm going to open us up a little wine. What do you think about that? Oh, I love wine. Great. This should go really nice with the Branzino. Yeah, light, a light white <laughs> wine and Branzino goes very well together. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. Great having you on the show again. Thank you very much. That'll work. Mm. It'll definitely work. <laughs> It'll it's definitely beautiful. work. Really nice. Okay. So um, the fish has been cooking for mm -hmm. like 20 minutes. It's about 135. Okay. So we need to take it out and let it rest for about 10 minutes. Okay, so we and have to let the fish rest. Yeah, and then we okay. take it out and let it rest, and then we then we crack it open and fillet it and save okay. it away. We'll return with more from the Chef's Kitchen. We now return to the Chef's Kitchen. Look at that, so it's really browned up. Yeah, browned up nicely. Big time. Yeah. So you just kind of Kind of break it away. Okay. And it kind of just like crumbles off like Crumbles this, off, huh? yeah. All right. So one of the things you have to be mindful of is when you're filleting it to, to push the salt away, because when you get underneath right. it there, you, you don't, don't want to get any of too much of the uh, salt anywhere around, so I like to brush it off as well. Yeah, so you, you want to be careful that you're getting it pretty clean. Yeah, because the sea salt is very, very um, powerful. <laughs> yeah, it's very salty. <laughs> That's a great idea is to use the pastry brush. A little pastry brush. Make a mess, of course. And the fish looks beautiful underneath. Thank you. So just get in there <clears throat> and we like to put, I'd like to cut along along the gill okay. line. You can really smell that rosemary and the grapefruit. Yeah. The grapefruit's a, a nice addition. I, I, I love this, all citrus with fish, mm -hmm. and this is just one, of my, just one of my favorite preparations overall. So we like to just pull the skin off. Okay. Wow, the skin pulls off really easily. Yeah, because yeah, it steams really nicely inside of there. We have a beautiful filet here, and somehow it works better on TV than it does. May I have a dish, please? Sure. You want to get underneath of it again. And That's right, we have that whole backside. Whole backside, so. Mm. The bones come right out. It looks perfectly cooked, too. You can just tell how moist it is just from looking at it. Trying to avoid all those pin bones on the top. Right. They're the ones that get caught. But it's part of the experience of eating a whole fish, you know? You, you get a couple bones, you just got to watch out for them. You just work through them. Exactly. And the chef gets the rest of the stuff that's left well, in the plate. Well, exactly, yeah. I mean, this somebody's got to clean that beautiful. Bone. Okay. So we'll put this on nice. the side. Are you going to go on there with that lemon olive oil? Yeah, well, but first we're going to dress it now. with... I was wondering what you were going to do with it. Beautiful tomatoes. Okay. They're very hot. The fennel got really nice and caramelized. Yeah. I'm going to put that down first. The fennel... See, smell, obviously, the fennel smells so obviously good. I didn't core mine the way you did. That's okay, but this one looks a lot smaller, so the core was probably really tender. Okay, a couple of tomatoes. That's my favorite part, the crispy bits, the little crunchy pieces of fennel. Yeah, so I throw a little olive oil, um, a little rosemary into my tomatoes when I cook mm. them, and I just, this is, this That's broth gold. is yeah. gold to me. Absolutely. So I like to dress everything with this a little bit. And now you put the lemon olive oil on these as well? Yes. Oh, okay. Beautiful. I can't wait to try this. You have to do it with me. Okay. All right. Going right for the fish. Wow. Oh, it's perfectly cooked. Perfectly cooked. cooked. It's so moist and succulent and tender, and it's... Perfectly seasoned. It's not Doesn't not even, salty. Not salty at all. But sometimes when you cook a whole fish, I feel like it's <clears> it's always a little bit under seasoned. Yeah. And it needs a sauce or something. But this it needs I, nothing else. I mean, 
maybe except a couple tomatoes. Yeah, the tomatoes are awesome. Mm. I, these are my favorite. You can't go wrong with roasted in-season heirloom tomatoes. The fennel. Mm. This is simple Italian food, done right at its best. So let's sample this let's key lime pie. Dessert. Okay. So. I'm gonna keep eating fish while you do that. <laughs> Getting the first piece out is always the toughest, right? Yeah, I love this. I one of my favorite kitchen tools is this offset spatula. Mm -hmm. So. You can do a lot with those. Yeah. Oh, beautiful. You did a great job with that. Thank you. And see, I've said it a thousand times already today, but that crust to filling ratio. That's a nice piece of pie. It's a real nice looking <laughs> piece of pie. Mm. The difference is the key limes. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you use regular limes, it's just not the same. You have to have key limes. You're right. You can taste that zest on top. It's strong. You don't need any more than that. It's so good. The filling like, is, it's silky and smooth and. <sighs> How does the sour cream play with it? Do you like the way that is? I, I love mean, it. As opposed to Chantilly cream, which is a little, not that it's heavier, but it's. It's just different. I like this. I love your interpretation. I love the crust. It's, yeah. I could easily polish this whole meal. Oh, well, that one's yourself. yours. This one's mine. <laughs> All right. Deal. <laughs> deal. Frank, it was so nice having you on the show again. Thank today. you, Nicole. Cheers. Cheers. I love coming to the chef's kitchen and working with Stephen Horn and the guys. This is a great experience with Nicole. Um, I guess it worked, paid off for me, making cheesesteaks uh, for all those years and then going to the restaurant school at Walnut Hill College um, gave me the technique and the experience that I needed to come and prepare meals like this and uh, display great cooking techniques.